Hey everyone, welcome to the GIST Podcast. If you're tired of being comfortable and want to take on living life from the context of 100%, fuck yeah! Join us each week as we share lessons we're experiencing in this crazy game called life. We invite you to play along and get your shit together. Take responsibility for how your life is currently going, and at the same time, take on new, fun, and sometimes crazy shit. We promise to challenge your thinking by being vulnerable, authentic, and straight up with what we're dealing with, what doesn't work, and what can. Be warned. This is not your grandma's podcast. Happy Black History Month, by the way. <laughs> we get a whole month? <laughs> we get a whole month. Oh, yes. Oh, shit. So I, I would like to open with a Black History poem today. Oh, I yeah. I know it's not going to be about me or Black History, but I'd like to open one just to, you know, give a salute and shout out to all the brothers and sisters of the African diaspora right. this morning from the gist. I assume we're on, we're rolling right now, right? As per usual, we're always rolling, man. Always rolling. So come on, the cameras. Yeah, I like that. I like just, do, what, just do it. Oh, yeah. yeah I like we to don't have to wait for timing. I can just do yeah. it. And you can put it where you want, right? Oh yeah. We cool. Can. This is one of my favorites. This is my favorite Black History poll. I've probably done this one for you guys before. It's called Mediums, and it no, was about the whole. So. You talked about the whole black, white, not black enough, bra, bra, bra. Okay, people have eyes in their face. You might not look black enough. You might be blackish, but people aren't going to say that. Oh, that's the first brother in the room. They're going to look at me because we have eyes. What really fucking sucks is when you could be in a room full of this and you're a fly in the buttermilk. Why? Because it's just the truth that not all of us are getting along. You know what I mean? And there's the big three, the Africans, the West Indians, the North Americans. Those are the three real big distinctive black communities of the African diaspora that we all generally know. And they're not fluidly in love with each other either. <laughs> so a there's, a of, there's a lot of- There's a Oh, well, there's a You're lot of You gotta be the people. right type of black. And I'm sure this is not the only culture, race, creed, religion, or whatever, but believes that there's a criteria. Yes. So if you don't fit the criteria, then you're not black enough. Okay? In the room, they won't consider our man because they have eyes in their face. Now let's, let's deal with me because you have eyes in your face. When I don't fit the criteria, it's about my friends, the company I keep, the ladies I like, the habits I have. The speech I have, all of that. Things like that make me not black enough. That's just surface shit. But straight up, it's because they have eyes in their face and ears on their head that they're not really listening with. So mm -hmm. I've always been in that position in lots of places. And it's all, it's all good. I'm not like, why am I where? But it was one of those uh, moments that had come over and over where I didn't feel peeps were respecting me. Uh, well, let's say peeps were just disrespecting me. You know, with the whole you're not black enough thing. So I wrote this poem called Mediums. And um, yeah, it's an anti-racism poem. I like it. Let's let's hear it. And uh, it's an informative poem. and It's a passionate poem. I love this poem. The poem is called Mediums. I swallow some blackboard paint so I can paint the word ain't a word spitting ink a chalk I still talk a fax machine paradox proper to stopper can't stop me or mock me your PMCs can't top me when a nigga gets a hold of technology it's microphone recology dealing with your lame foot and chance to puppetology I offer no apology for bovine or swine domesticated equine for mankind my own mind up and mixed artistic with linguistic and I slung a hot rock like Basquiat when he brought the black thought bleeding paint upon paper he changed and then deranged the sight of man the earth raper he closed the eye caper and some years later since my brother's life broke i realize i am a smudge a perfect brush stroke with pretty colors pretty colors i am orange and yellow and red i surprised myself when poetically bled myself i was tongue twisted up like a dread with thoughts that rot sticking up in my head thrust back to life like lazarus strife 
had me strike me a hazardous pose wide open with wrists and neck exposed liquid life trickling eclectic flows from my veins pure fire voodoo reigns funeral pyre my heated aspiration to be an element not simply elemental or even instrumental but a song and a symphony with self-pity sympathy I'm conducting those in the first row who think they know I'd make them all play second fiddle if they don't jump out the middle and flee like they was escaping the passage piss shit and vomit on the slavery comet founded inspiration in black and broken bones the sounds of the lands that we call our homes and we can all hear it drawn to its timbre like whips to cracks licks to backs feet to axe funny how we stood taller when we lost our toes and held our heads high in a regal manner defying the yokes learning the language to create great stains kings and queens now bound in chains and walking like gods unlike the ghosts of our gracious hosts now passed on to the land of duppies weighted down by the shackles of brutality that they constructed inside the hall of shame each one has been inducted back to the books back to the beginning back to the future what we were and what we are back in the black hiding in the back row back in the black like these cats don't know black like my namesake black like death row black like rum cake black like afro black like my taekwondo brothers afro dojo because you can't make wake a blank slate because i'm the winning you can't reap a rape i take your shots like i'm in the russian system off the shoulder wrist strike to the throat i'm a diss em, and i'm a talk louder and i'm a walk prouder i'm leading by design because this hour is mine i leave you with the fever then your lip catch a slap from the anosha bashobi ingalosi of rap this here is the evolution amoeba to man grunts to griots slavery to bravery cryptic like messages written on rice rolled up in blunt papers burned like a foremothers at the stake hung like a forefathers dancing from trees a painful slow waltz done in black and broken knees please 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 help me find the method i talk so much that my teeth itch and my hair hurts lyrical spurts i try and i try and i try you say you want a sensitive man and then you hate me when I cry, I gotta internalize and re-energize and represent because you know my words quick clever could never be spent and in this industry, no poem C mediocrity can mess with me though it's not all I'll be in this here reality, I'm a flow it cause y'all know it, black is poetry, see <laughs> you know, I just don't get how you know it all oh, up wow, here, it dude. blows my mind man, awesome. it is awesome um I'd like to I'd like to rip that apart with you one time. <laughs> that was uh, <clears throat> where, where, where my listening shifted when you started to talk about you in the front row. Like something happens in the poem to I me at least. I, those in the first row who think they know and make them all play second fiddle if they don't jump out the middle. So you heard me say uh, a song in a symphony with self pity sympathy. So I'm starting to create that orchestra scene. So I'm the orchestra, I'm the conductor. I make them all, I've, I'm conducting those in the first row who think they know. Okay, people always at the front think they've got it, right? Yeah. And it's not always true. Right. People in the light always think they're enlightened. It's not always true. I make them all play second fiddle, because you know how you have first, second, and third positions in, in the orchestra. I right. make them all play second fiddle, so I'm moving back. If they don't jump out the middle, get out of my way, and flee like they was escaping the passage, the middle passage. Right? From Africa to America. Right. right so right. now I've taken them, I've taken you out of the orchestra and onto the boat. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want this whole, right? And then I say piss, shit, and vomit on the slavery mm -hmm. comment found an inspiration in black and broken bones. If people don't know about how the slave ships were constructed, yeah. they were tears yes. and they were shelves. Yeah. So you were chained side by side lying down on your backs yeah. with a shelf above so you can't yeah. get up yeah. and you're not moving. Mm -hmm. So you're in hell. Everything above, where do you go to the bathroom? Where do your tears, where do your, your urine, piss, yeah, shit, and vomit, that. blood? Where does it, what does it do? It all goes down. On each other. The yeah. ones at the bottom have the worst because down mm -hmm. there is the water and the rats and wherever water is at, you're going to get disease. So I was trying, of course you have to, if you have reference, you pack all of that in, right? That's what the poetry is supposed to do. Piss, shit, and vomit on the slavery comet founded inspiration in black and broken bones. Because you you probably heard of those slave ships uh, being chained up and waiting. 
or or basically the rumors of the slave ships and the conditions, you knew what it was going to be like. You would rather be dead than be on that, right? And But still, I say founded inspiration in black and broken bones. I mean, it was a brutal passage and they still survived that. To live in brutality and still survive that. I mean, that's got to be the strongest of the strong. You want to talk epigenetics? (laughs) People wonder why there's so many black... um, Super athletes. I mean, fuck. Well, you trained us for 300 years to fucking, you know what I mean? Be linebackers and running backs and fucking basketball players. And yeah, like, hello. It's (laughs) weird how we miss that, right? You know, you, it's product of environment. Uh, I was listening to a, to a white comedian once and he was like, oh, uh, Theo Vaughn. He's from, uh, New Orleans. So we grew up with a lot of black people. He goes, man, you ever fight black kids? He goes, they win, yo. They win. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just funny, right? Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> this is funny. Yeah, I, I wanted to throw a little history and make it visual. Yeah, man. That's uh... right. And do that that thing you said you feel you felt a shift, and it's like yeah, with that with like a song and a symphony with self pity sympathy. I'm conducting those in the first row who think they know. I make them all play second fiddle if they don't jump out the middle and flee like they was escaping the passage. Piss, shit, and vomit on the slavery comet found it, yeah. right? Out of the pit. On but the see, ship. What, what we're doing here is what has to happen. It's right? got to be broken down. People, people, like, it's, they're like, oh, wow, that was great, but they don't get the depth, right? <laughs> I always hope that people will take time to ask poets and writers and the performer, the artist. How'd you get it? Yeah. You know, uh, I'm a Simpsons fan and I have a whole bunch of seasons all on, you know, collection. I watched them all. And then as soon as I was done, put in season one, all commentary. And people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, this is something I really love and I think it's amazing. I want to hear what the guys who've created it yeah, that's are thinking point. about. So now I get the little jokes, the billions of little nuances and language when I get the references that these guys are saying, it's like, holy, you get Opens to up another yeah. world. Yeah, man. What do you got, Dave? Well, we don't have a guest. As in she's not here yet or she's not As coming? in I have no idea where she is, okay. which is all good. Um, yeah, we're just going to carry on. May I? To, to carry on? To carry on, man. You you've got the mic. I mean, technically, we all got a mic, but you can you can have that one. <laughs> you have the cock. So, um, there's something that's occurring for me right now, and this is just really relevant and present. So, I want to bring it up. <sighs> so, you had mentioned something in the poem that I was like, "Damn." You said, "Now, this might not be right, so bear with me." But basically, you were talking about you want me to show emotion, but then you hate me when I cry. I knew you were going to pull that one out. Tell me about that. I felt you move on that. Tell me about that. I try and I try and I try. You say you want a sensitive man and then you hate me when I cry. For everyone's got a different black experience. So fuck you if yours isn't mine. In my black experience, I have found that we in our culture around us in our north american canadian culture with our whatever is blasting us most of the time Mm -hmm. we have these ideas of masculinity and Mm -hmm. femininity and blah 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 blah. yeah the the point of the matter is at least in my time especially growing up that masculinity was for white males the the image of masculinity was for white males oh yes because if you're masculine as a black man uh uh-oh it's a different masculinity as a black man for me it was completely for up for my people as far as i can attest to knowing my people i at one point realized i'm black really black to a lot of shit suddenly i'm black to things it was a weird Mm -hmm. you get what i mean not i'm black i'm black to shit yeah you're black oh shit yes i'm black to that man i started to understand that these ideas of masculinity we're, I'm black to that. That's, what? And so I had to start finding out or accepting or embracing or whatever the word is, a connection had to be made with the masculinity of my people. And of course, we're talking about 
my people of the latest of 50s, 60s, 70s, earliest of 80s. Okay, this is this is where I'm drawing most of my mm-hmm. masculinity of mm-hmm. the black male from. And he's pissed off. Mm-hmm. He's angry. He's mm-hmm. mad as fuck. You know, he, he does. He, he's all kinds of shit. He's PTSD the fuck up. Bra, 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 bra. He's trigger happy. Mm-hmm. Not even with a gun. He's just trigger happy. Right. All kinds of things like that. It, all of the male stuff that I was supposed to be in the black community was aggressive Mm -hmm. and hard, okay? It was aggressive, hard, tough. You don't have to be from the ghetto. You better have some ghetto in you. Mm -hmm. That's how it was. And if others say it wasn't for them, fuck you. It wasn't Mm -hmm. for you. This is how I perceive it was happening. Black men definitely didn't cry. Mm Mm-hmm. Black men didn't, definitely didn't dress metrosexual. You dress in metrosexual, you gay. Mm-hmm. Straight and, up. And there's something wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, motherfucking meth man, put it right out there, okay? Yeah. So if yeah. you understand where I'm coming yeah, from, yeah, yeah. I can't get down with Joe Whitey's man. I can't be that shit. I just, and I don't want to. Thanks. Yeah. But no thanks. No other culture's really been blasting anything at me, so they weren't a threat or an influence past what I loved about them. Yeah, right. But they didn't... It was the black and white thing again. She was here. It was the black and white thing again. Yeah, right. I should hold off or should I keep going? Well, no, we're just... Yeah, so so what I want to create with you though, okay. with that, because this is... No, 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 we're good, man. Okay. It's all good. I'll just... Let me just make sure. Did I finish that properly? Yeah. Um, at the end of it all, mm-hmm. yes, black women... We're not looking for a sensitive black man. Mm-hmm. Don't fucking tell me you're that gonna be wanted hard. some guy who's going to yeah. cry. Tell you he's depressed. Are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. You know, a whole lot of women, I don't care if they were black or not, a whole lot of women were like, um, men got to get more sensitive and shit. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Man. And then you show up with sensitive. I've and done it's that like, a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And whoa. They, whoa. It's like you grew four heads. Mm-hmm. They wanted to book it. Hello. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Oh, we've got a little, we've got an extra guest. And this little guy here. Does he want to be on the podcast too? It sounds like he is on the podcast. <laughs> I imagine she is. Uh, she should settle down. She's usually really good, but she got a little uh, worked up as I'm searching for your address and she starts whining and I start mm. saying, bye. <laughs> right, because you know what? She's feeling your energy. She's feeling my energy, yeah, so yeah. she's still feeling it. And then until she's like, I, Are we calm yet? Until, she's laying down now. Oh, she's so pretty. Hi. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, sometimes so people awesome. say you should tell people she's your therapy dog, but the truth is I'm her therapy person. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and I would push back and say you guys are probably therapy for each other. That's right. hundred yeah. percent. Always pushing, David. Yeah. yeah. That's Always the way, pushing. That's the way to do it. <clears throat> so, uh, I only met you once yes. and that was at the creative mornings presentation. And, uh, apparently that moved a few people, which is, uh, totally what was intended. It was amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I, I had a, a little bit of context created around yourself and, and a little bit about your journey and what you've been up to. So Karen uses, has been using art as, as her own therapy uh, in dealing with, and we'll likely talk about some of that that you were dealing with, um, grappling with identity, her own identity, uh, likely self-worth and value and, and the, the whole dichotomy of uh, what happens when we are grappling with mental, uh, the mental condition, the human being. Well, the good news is, is everyone else in this room's got all of that sorted out. So yeah, you're yeah. in the right everybody place. Everybody everywhere has it. <laughs> yeah, we've got it all figured. That's right. Everybody everywhere has that figured out, don't they? Yeah. Until you have a conversation and with them and you realize. How, uh, well, you know them before you know Exactly that's right. What the story that's is right. That. But before the barriers come down, and, and part of um, what the just life is about is to uh, facilitate the dropping of those barriers and to have conversations that are actually ones that make the difference because they're real and they're not sugar coated. We do not plan any of our podcasts because inside of the planning the the richness of the experience kind of gets stifled the desire to get somewhere shows up yeah and this is actually perfect because the creative process 
So I'm a designer artist. I don't practice as much as I used to. My, my art is now in uh, language and words, uh, this platform, but the, the necessity of the, uh, the chaotic creative process for anything to, to like turn into something that you, um, that, that have any, that has any kind of emotion connected to it is, is necessary, absolutely fundamental. And, uh, and sometimes it doesn't come out the way we want it to come out, but it actually came out exactly the way it needed to come out in the moment. Um, at least that's been my experience and, and my experience of, uh, other artists and my experience of my wife, who's also an artist who, who is doing the dance of self-expression in her work, uh, on her terms. Right. Uh, and, and what does that all look like as something that's worthwhile and that is a value to other people too like the the inherent value of of what you do as an artist art is will never expire it'll never become irrelevant right like they're dated or dated that's right there, there is always a relevance in the expression that art puts on the table um so I, we'll we'll start there because i what i'm really curious about is um what the journey was for you where where was the, the the catalyzing moment like what what was that tipping point because we all got it sometimes we overflow it to the point of just complete unworkability but what was that for you oh gee that, there's probably a lot of tipping points but i think that the tipping point was that i lost purpose in life mm. and i had been very purposeful working uh, in advertising sales for a long time and mm -hmm. feeling very competent, feeling very much since I was a young girl that I was always a feminist and really connected with that. Um, also wanted to be a mother. And by the time I had the third child, I realized that I didn't need all that income stream that both my husband and I had in our work and that it became more important for me to stay home with uh, the kids and that we both agreed that that would be the right thing for our family. Um, I think really quickly, though, <laughs> the balance of power overtime. changed. <laughs> and I began to really accommodate mm. um, and to accept that now I didn't have the financial decision-making authority the way I had when I was also getting that good size paycheck mm -hmm. and that that's a, that's a common thing amongst mm -hmm. couples right and I, I, we both went into it really unknowingly that that mm -hmm. would happen so also very yeah so by the time that second or that third child was uh, two years old I was laying on the couch with serious depression mm -hmm. and laid there for six months and began the whole stream of actually I did have good counseling but also a lot of medication mm -hmm. to the point where I was on high doses of, of nine medications and they continued not to, not to work. And I, over time, just lost the will to thrive. And I, I can't say it's completely because I wasn't working. There was something else missing because I don't. There's, there's a lot there. You could have been working somewhere and it would right. still have been there. It could have. And I still would say, I, I don't know whether I even say I work now or I don't work. Like now I just live. And I do make money, but I don't really think about it as work anymore. It's just purpose in life. And money flows behind that as part of return for my energy. Um, but as I became more and more unwell, I don't know how many years that I basically laid on that couch before I had a complete uh, hospitalization and lack of will to thrive to the point where they thought I had dementia. And Wow. It was holy crap. <laughs> That's quite a strong assertion, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. They thought it was Lewy body syndrome, which has about a two-year turnaround before you actually decease. Um, oh wow! And so, just ballpark of yeah. whereabouts in time? About you're ten talking. years ago, or maybe twelve years ago. Wow. Okay. Was the final lowest point? If that's called the lowest point. In, in a way, it was almost like, have you seen that movie, um, Gravity, with um, George Clooney and Sandra Bullock? I know the where one Where he I becomes untethered from the spaceship. Right. Yes. 
I do remember that one. Yeah. I've heard about the scene actually. Right. But I haven't seen the movie. So it's, it's easy to visualize being in space and becoming untethered from anything. Mm. First of all, the spaceship is just gone. And then they decide to explore and he becomes untethered. And that's really what it was like for my spirit to become completely untethered and absolutely let go and go with it. In that hospital, I met so many amazing people and there was a fearlessness and there was, even though I, my communication skills were so poor, I didn't have good, I didn't have language skills. I didn't understand money. I, I really was incompetent, but there was a spirit in me that was really strong. And I made a lot of interesting relationships in that hospital, both people that would come in as visitors or staff or other, I was going to say other guests, other hospital <laughs> guests. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way to <laughs> set it up. way to set it up for sure, yeah. It was amazing. And, you know, there were really great adventures in there that really helped me learn how to risk being so vulnerable and unafraid of the unknown and to realize there's really no bottom in life. We hear that myth about the breaking point and reaching the bottom and that that will be your turnaround. And I don't even think there's a bottom at all in life. It's just, there's just a, a perpetual going in a direction. Yeah. And then sometimes maybe you reach the end of a tether and you go back the other way gently or fiercely, whatever it's going to be. Right. But to really, really let go of yourself. And um, it's not, it's the word fearless isn't correct. There's, there's fear, especially as I'm more um, cognizant of life and more conscious of society again. Um, I've sort of fit back in in some ways. So I wouldn't say that I'm a fearless person at all. It's just that I face the fear and go anyway. Like being lost on my way here. And think, You're, I'll get there anyway. You point to something that um, somebody else was grappling with for herself. She's a life coach. And she actually, in, in the language that she uses, used fearlessness as part of her mission. But the reality is it's actually courage because there is always fear. You can't not have fear. Uh, however, you can muster the courage to stand in opposition of fear and, and you know, take a, a never, a, another direction, a, a new stand for something different. Um, so there's courage. You were courageous in, in deciding to make a choice that um, you didn't even know it would make the difference. No. I think one of the one of the questions a psychiatrist asked me was, "Do I trust people?" And I, of course, he was looking for paranoia. And I said, I, "I don't trust everybody. I know that there's people that aren't safe, but I trust the universe will hold me. I trust I'm safe going forward in life." Mm -hmm. And it's just that simple, right? Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah, because if you. Yeah, you, 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 it sounds like uh, there's a freedom there. You don't have to hold or control everything. A huge freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is fascinating, by the way, because just like when you hear stories like that, you're like, oh, wow, that sounds pretty in intense and dramatic. But the fact that like, like I actually have some background with that world mm -hmm. and just you sitting here now and just how you're so graceful and how you hold, you know, just the space that you hold. It's like, wow. So I just, I'm so fascinated. I want to hear more. So I want, I'm curious, like, and we can, there's no way we're going to capture all of it, but it's, <laughs> you kind of gave us the world of that. So where, where, at what point did the courage is starting to show up? Relationships are starting to show up. At what point did the art? I don't know how play? long I was in the hospital before I went to an art therapy class. So was, that, is, was it at the hospital? At the hospital. Or? Okay. It is about an hour long and they've got a bunch of like a little project. And the first one was a birdhouse and there were all these tiles and there's like the dollar store, little wooden birdhouse. And I glued some blue tiles onto a birdhouse and I noticed that I was smiling and that I liked the color blue. And that's about it. And <laughs> did, did you have experience with art before that? I was making cards and doing some stamping. I'd worked in advertising sales, so there was some creativity, right. not so much in that I did any of the design, but in just communicating between a client and the art department. So there's a bit of a concept about how design works and what sure. is what is good design. 
But you just but creatively playing it. and exploring that wasn't a thing for you. No. Hmm. No. no, it had never been. Art has, was never. I was more of an animal person than an art person. What What got your, like, why did you even decide to go? To the art. They, yeah. They sent me. They just say, yeah, go check this out. Go. That's Probably so not even optional. It was no, like, yeah. it go, yeah. go. This is just on the list today. Yeah. This is what she does today. Yeah, get out of bed and go down the hall. Frankly, if people didn't tell me what to do, I didn't do anything. Yeah, that, you know, in, right. in that environment, get that's up and how go it goes. Eat. You become very institutionalized. Right. I have, um, so my brother that passed away, he was in and out of that system quite regularly. I have a adopted sister who is also now in the throngs of, of that environment, in and out of homes and she just came out of Peter Lougheed, which is, in my opinion, the worst facility in the city. And I might be biased about that. But um, yeah, so I, I, that, you don't, it like sucks it out of you when, the second you're in there. Mm -hmm. There is just this, and the people that are there to be of service, um, man, it really takes something to, to be able to hold that space for a group of people who are spiraling out of control yeah. and most are unable. Yeah. You to can do see that. it. You can, you, you can tell which ones are tuned in and it's, it's, it's the few and you can tell the ones that are like, is it three o'clock yet? Very few. And, and, and for very small amount of time, we are not, we are not capable. I feel to be able to stand in that space, hold that space for very long. That is where community is is paramount. Like you got to tag someone in and, and take the reins for a little while so that you can recollect and 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 refocus and recharge and and re reset what I, why I'm here. Uh, but what happens is uh, they're not given the resources. They're not given the time. Uh, they're not uh, they're not given the uh, the space to to sort out their own stuff as they are helping others sort out their stuff. And, and they are not supporting. They can't, it's, they are unable to do so. It's, it's more uh, like they're managing. They're just keeping they're yeah. totally managing. somewhat safe and physically preventing them from killing themselves. Yeah. Basically that's almost yeah, and, all they're doing. And uh, that is, that is just eking survival right for for those that are there that are that are grappling with the things that they grapple with um they are just there to just barely survive wow it's horrible. This, this could go so many different directions just well and, and let's circle this back because there is there was uh, magic that showed up for you in inside of therapy right right that that there was now light at the end of the tunnel which was before probably dark no, no there was no tunnel. <laughs> no tunnel. No, no tunnel. tunnel even. I wow. didn't know there was a tunnel. So the woman in uh, the room next to me had a car in the parking lot, and we and I had a Visa card, and she liked to knit, and so we decided to go to Michael's, and we'd get this one hour pass. We'd zoom over to the store, and stock up, and pretty soon the window by my bed was getting higher and higher, filled with all kinds of colors and paper and. So it's probably a really great place to for everyone to be because of the energy that that all provided. I don't know if oh, you noticed yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, They'd all be hanging out at the door. Can we come in? Yeah. <laughs> oh, even my friends that would come would start to see. They they actually thought I was doing so well because they were seeing this excitement around art. They weren't seeing my still inability to comprehend. For instance, the Visa card went way up. <laughs> completely I, I had no insight as to you just needed reality. something and you you yeah. got it i was self-medicating with art you know if you're going to self-medicate with anything <laughs> that's uh, the way to go i think art is probably a safe <laughs> good bet it's on it's, it's awesome wow so uh, after time uh, there was one point where the psychiatrist said what would you do if i took away all your art supplies and it was a, it wasn't like a threat. It was a curiosity. Yeah, right. And I said nothing, and he got it. I would do nothing. There would be nothing. Uh, wow, <laughs> that's cool. Wow, what 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 hit you there? I, I just, language, <laughs> right? So language always hits me number one. So that was great. Oh, I'm sorry. Language always hits me. It's number one. So that was great. Nothing. Number two, when people say. 
using therapy as art. I've been doing that, I suppose, for a long time. But it was very funny when I cut one of my most popular hip hop tracks called Old School. One of the lines I dropped was, this going to be my therapy. And I kind of slipped it into the verse. It wasn't a big focus. It was kind of a peak, but not a, not a mountain. So many people responded to that. Mm. I had all kinds of, even the two producers in, in, the, in the studio, they never heard my, my lyrics before I dropped them. I'd go in and say, okay, I'm ready. And then drop them so they hear it for the first time. When I drop that, it's it's in the beginning. It's in the first verse. They both peeked up like this. I was like, what is it? Okay, cool. What's going on? They liked people. it. Just know just those guys. It was the first time. It was in the recording. Right. They, I was like, cool. You guys like that? I, I don't know really why I felt to write that. And then I realized with so many people coming to me and saying, that line, this is going to be my therapy. I was like, I guess it really has been. And people ask me about what poetry has done for me. It's done a lot of things. I can honestly say it saved my life. If poetry is going to be anything, it can be a lifesaver. Not just the therapy, but it can stop things. Isn't it interesting that everyone got connected with that line? And because it's a, there's an intuitiveness that we all know. Like you know, people talk about mental health. Like oh, they have mental health <laughs> issues. Like that person over there has a mental health problem. It's like you know, you, you get that we all have mental health, right. right? And we all intuitively know. It's like we were talking about earlier. Like oh, I've got it figured out. Right. We it, all know that we all have a, stuff. Right. It's a spectrum and it's a pendulum. Right. You know so. My my pendulum will go back and forth continually of well being, and I continue to have to reset my well being. Talk talk more about that because I think that's another thing that people like a misconception is that oh I, I've got to get my shit figured out, right. and now once I have all. it, yeah, now once I'm, I now I'm great now. Yeah, I that's got it together. True. We're good. No more dips. Exactly. Right, we're cool. I dip, <laughs> I dip every day. Yes, you dip every day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So just talk about that. Like what what's that like, and and what do you do about it? I started to really pay attention to it. At, at the first time that I recovered through art, if you want to call it that, I wasn't as aware. It was it was unfolding for the first time. And now uh, I had a recent time of feeling very, very low. And what I thought is, as a teacher now, as an instructor, mm. um, although I mainly teach how to paint in the medium that I use, I also always talk about art for well-being and how it serves uh, me now and how it might be making awareness for other people. But I wanted to be uh, cognizant of how I was healing currently through art or how, what resiliencies. And so I started to make notes. And one of the things I really noticed was that art connects me with others. Mm -hmm. I had gone for a long time focused on loneliness being my problem. And that I needed, I needed to solve this loneliness problem. And a husband wasn't doing it, and uh, friendships weren't quite doing it. And I didn't have enough, enough, enough. And then I realized that it comes from myself. It's not a, ever an outside fill. Mm. I tried to change. I did change my language around loneliness to being that I'm someone who seeks connection. And so, mm. in art, I seek connection. I meet others that I want to paint with or to converse with or to to join up with or to instruct. There's all different kinds of ways that art connects me. So art for me is like a big circle. It's not just creating, but it's the whole cycle of life, of creating, of sharing, of monetizing even, because I'd be in a businesswoman. For me, having that part in the cycle of it is part of the healing. I can look in the painting and look at the colors mingling and think, oh, this is so amazing and be meditative on that. But there's way more to the whole therapy of it for me than just one aspect of creating art. And you were so aware of it. This is the other thing. So you may or may not relate to this, but we get really uh, narrow sighted with our focus mm -hmm. yeah. and it's like, oh my God. This is it. This is the thing. Everything else? Nope. No, no. This is it. And then what happens? It be no longer becomes it anymore. Because it's, it's, it, we, we miss the holistic, like full circular, That's like right. everything. It's a holistic thing. It's yeah. not small. That's why for, I've taken a few art therapy classes 
And so you paint and how does the color red make you feel? You talk about it afterward. And for me, that's just a very narrow snippet of mm-hmm. healing through art. So you, you started talking about, we started talking about how it's a, it's a pendulum, right? It's, right. it's like right. upside downs and you're down every day at right. some point, right? right? So it's, so some, some weeks I'm down into where I would wonder if it's clinical, but mostly I'm not in a clinical down. It's more about sadness and sensitivity. And right. so to get used to that is another factor and how to support that each day to allow myself to go down you know, let the pendulum go into the sadness and have, yeah. I joke about it as saying my daily cry, but. Right. So it sounds to me like you're actually kind of uh, experimenting and getting to know yourself and finding out like, okay, well maybe there's actually something in that discomfort that I'm not aware of. Right. And how is it going to push me? Right. Fascinating. Oh, so good. That is what it's, do you see, that's the thing, right? Cause what do we spend our whole life doing? Avoiding discomfort, avoiding the feelings, avoiding the conversations, like, and then you realize why you're, you're trying to wonder, wonder why your life isn't working the way you want it to work. That's right? why I lost the will to thrive. That's why I shut down. I stopped having a voice. I've been a, a quiet girl growing up and a cooperative person in mm-hmm. relationships and work. And really, by the time I reached independence, in other words, left my marriage I didn't know what movies I liked. I didn't know what I wanted Mm. to read or what music I wanted. I really had to start. I'm still now working on discovering what what do I want. Welcome to you. Gosh, can I ask you a question that's a little uncomfortable (laughs) for me? Because I'm not a girl. (laughs) You just said I was a quiet girl. And I just want to, I want to, and I'm trying to like position this question such that it lands. Do you feel that, because you said that and I heard it in a way that like, I heard it in a way of like expectation and, and almost like, no, you're, you're a quiet girl. This is how that goes. This is how, what being a girl is like, do you feel like there was a molding in that of at all? or No, I think I was a genuinely quiet girl. Right. And the environment that I was in also had an effect on uh, my vulnerability and my my sensitivity was just more receptive to uh, sternness, perhaps. So I would never blame the sternness for my withdrawal or my fear or my avoidance. I would say the combination, like the recipe was working that way. And not even to blame that to say I should have had a better recipe or people who were affecting my life should have been more sensitive to my needs. I wouldn't say that because now like I'm flourishing right. and I've had an opportunity to stretch against the constraints um, to rise out of being a quiet girl. And one of my friends, I have a very good friend who became like a mirror of seeing when I had been seeing myself negatively for many, many years, I began to look into what he saw about me and see this person who flourished. And I don't say that he set my direction or he set my thoughts as much as I began to see myself that way. That's really all that counts. I see myself that way. So there is a uh, an interesting grapple between ourselves, how we see ourselves or perceive ourselves and what we make that mean, and then how others see ourselves. And what's well, what I'm clear about is the reality lives with other people. We like to have the reality live over here, but we're the only one over here. And it's actually not the experience of other people. The, other, the experience of other people is who you are in the world. And uh, for, for me, it was a, a allowing and accepting of what other people's experiences were of me as part of my growth, as part of understanding who I am, because we ra- we create ridiculous stories about who we are and how we operate and, and what we're good at and what we're not good at. And it always, always occurs as a surprise with other people. I want to, I want to build off that. And I, and, and I actually want to hear wake chime in for a second here, but I, what you said is really interesting because it's how we show up is in the listening of other people, like in the community. Right. And there's an interesting balance between it because you said something earlier 
that it comes from myself, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. So you're lo- like how you feel lonely or if you feel good or if you if feel I connected. Feel happy, if I feel love, yeah. it's not that person loving me makes me feel love. It's right. I feel love yeah. and I let that flow out. Yeah. So there's like, there's like the unique and individual side of it starts with me and I create the space, but there's also then the connected you know, a part community, of the community how it impacts you. Yeah. And how that's you sh- reinforces it. That's right. So there's an intention that we get to create. It's always our choice. Yeah. And we, you, we always get to do that. We always get to get to say how it goes right. and then it gets reinforced and then we can nurture what really works for us and for others, or we can decide to kill it. So it never it, <laughs> it decide to kill it. It never is one way. There's an occurring, right? Pendulum. And you get yeah. to, you get a choice inside of all of it. This is so cool. What's going on over there? It feels just like <laughs> cool things I'm hearing. Well, did you want to ask me something in particular? No, or? no, not at all. I just want to hear more from you. Well, when we talked about that whole lonely, that lonely aspect, you know, my experience is this when I have been teaching certain students and they ask about your path or they ask about loneliness in the world or living your truth or whatnot. One kid in particular said, it feels like you live your truth. How do you live your truth? It was very, very flat. It just came right very short yeah. like, like that. And it was kind of out of a rebunctious school. So it was, it was an un- unexpected, very direct question. And, um, I did compliment him and tell him the fact that you're asking the question, you're, you're in a good spot. I said, this is my interpretation of it when you talk about your path or your purpose or I said, we'll use path because people are visual. So we can see that in our heads as I say the word. So we talk about paths. All I can tell you is this. I, I can't say if I walk only one and I can't say I know where the destinations are, Bra bra bra. All the euphemisms aside, that's just the truth. You're on some kind of path or you're on a few. The thing is, it's motherfucking yours. <laughs> and when you and when you have made that leap to knowing that it's yours and once you've decided and you've got that conviction and you're walking your path, it's yours. Of course it's gonna be lonely sometimes. Mm-hmm. I said, mm-hmm. and if you just consider the visual, paths do cross. <laughs> That's why you feel that you're with people sometimes. And that's why you feel like, where the fuck did everybody go? Because <laughs> the path is motherfucking yours. So once in a while, that loneliness, it, it must happen. Mm-hmm. If you can accept it, it logically must feel like I'm fucking moving alone through this. Because, yeah, 7.2 billion other people got their shit. So, yeah, sometimes I am alone. It's all good. When you talk about that pendulum swinging, mine swings a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. ever seen Jacob's Ladder? Remember that visual of the face going back? <laughs> That's how mine is mm-hmm. it's all the time. <laughs> I had to get used to that, as you had said. And now I can just get low and be cool. It, it, love this because I feel really normal right now. <laughs> it's changed <laughs> what, that. What, 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 no, no, no. I mean, like. But it's okay. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> you know, it's like there's a there's a level of acceptance. This is the type of conversations I like to have. Is like get real with like we're all dealing with stuff. But what's interesting about being alone is that sometimes it's great and sometimes it's therapeutic and sometimes it feels really good and it's on purpose. And then sometimes it's like, man, I'm in a room get full of people up here and I'm all alone. Or um or I'm alone and I'm all alone. Like I'm all alone. Right? I agree. And what I try to do now is just be cool with all of that just be okay with the uncomfortable feeling of i'm alone in a room full of friends i actually like these motherfuckers and i ain't feeling them right it's all right man and you know what i mean but i think that it's okay okay. i'm gonna go the real struggle for me shows up when i try to when i try to control that when I try to like grapple with it and be like, oh, what's wrong it with me? Fit Why in is this box? It? Yeah, I should, you know, I should and be it this way. Or... If you don't put a lid on it. <laughs> <laughs> well I mean, said. It fits in the box, kind well of. It said. spills a bit, but if you don't try and trap it down, it kind of fits in the box. Or you're like, hey, dude, you know, did you know that there's giant boxes over here and you've got yeah, that tiny little box? <laughs> this is a refrigerator <laughs> box from the 70s, bitch. <laughs> Holds a lot of shit. And that's how I feel about loneliness if, if that. Is what I notice that? is the waves of it don't last forever. 
Yeah. Right. It's yeah. Nothing seems And in a given last, day, yeah. if I have 20 minutes of it at nine o'clock in the morning, I don't have to rush to solve it right away because it right. will pass regardless of anything that I do. Oh, that is such great. Yeah. Uh, a, such a great reminder. The sky isn't falling. You can make it absolute, can't you? You totally can. This is like how it's going to go now for the rest of my life. This is now my life. And then an hour <laughs> later, it's passed. <laughs> and we're sitting in the corner, crazy? cradling again. ourselves, <laughs> rocking. Yeah. Considering the end. <laughs> Considering the end. Like, <laughs> this is it. Oh, man. I love that. <laughs> Look at we are fucked up. Oh. And it's okay. And it's all good. Like, I think that's the thing. I, there, I wrote something in my journal the other day. We are um, a couple loud expressions away from schizophrenia, bipolar, you know, like what, whatever the condition is that uh, that was what my brother grappled with, um, that he ended up for, for whatever reason, um, allowing it to just take over. We have all those voices in the background, uh, dictating, narrating, pointing fingers. Um, and uh, it only takes a, a small little pivot and shift to have one of them just take over indefinitely. Yeah. Like it, we are all on the edge, the bleeding edge of this. Not that, that there's anything wrong. It's just how it's going. No, it's just how it is. But no one's putting it on the table. Because here's the thing. If you voiced, like you're saying, if you voiced a couple of things that, on a given day that are going through your head. If you voice that out loud, all of a sudden people are like, are you okay? What's his deal? Like we got to get him some help, right? If you begin to voice <laughs> it. So I, my workshops are a long day and I begin telling a bit about my story. And over the course of the day, I'll share different things like how I've married myself and, and why, and some inspiration I've had. And by the end of the day, nobody is looking at me strangely. I tell them that when I studied art, my instructor made, she said, Instead of going back to the hospital, why do you come here like it's a day program? And she made sure that I had nutrition and I had art supplies and that I had a project or some kind of focus. And she also made a bed under her desk and I would go lay there. And people wow. completely ignored me like I was normal. I, I, They treated me like I was normal and I think that it just made me feel comfortable. And if we can all do that for each other... And so when I have a group of people in my studio and we're talking about things, they begin to share things and normalize their oddities and idiosyncrasies. In, and exactly. This is fascinating. It, so it comes from myself, right? So here's the thing. You show up in a room and there's someone laying under a desk. Who's making that weird? Well, whoever is making it weird. Yeah, it, right? It actually comes from myself. So if I were just okay with, quote unquote, people's weirdness, maybe I could start being okay with my own weirdness. Maybe there isn't actually something that's weird or normal. It's just like it actually comes from myself. I get to say, oh, that's their normal. Cool. And I'm okay with that because here's my normal. or what You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden it's like, that's, that's right. not my normal, but I'm okay with your normal. People are really actually very accepting. <laughs> Because they get to be normal. They get to be normal. When we share our truth comfortably, without embarrassment, they accept it. And then they can be their own weirdness. There's a measure of power there for other people. It, it's always there. That's been my experience. It's like it's refreshing to hear someone speak their truth, however uncomfortable, uncomfortable it might have been afterwards. When we let go of the uncomfortability, we now get to be. Right just in the in the experience of another human being being truthful and uh and we are lit up by it excited by it we we want more of it and then we go recede back into our caves right because you know if only well it takes practice right totally so because you said it earlier so practice being yourself because there's all this stuff in there that you're denying and whether you want to admit it or not you said you know, by the end of the day, nobody thought I was weird. Like you just said, oh, I married myself. And we're, if that happens in the first five minutes, people are like, wow, that's a little weird She's thing to say. Weirdo. But by the time <laughs> three, yeah, right. But by the time three o'clock shows up, people are like, oh, so yeah. I did it. And you're all of a sudden, you're just like totally connected. They get you. Everything's cool because you're just unreservedly. You're just being yourself. Right. It's fascinating. My friend that I was referring to earlier, one day he said, don't be so dramatic. And I thought, oh, that's the answer. 
Be dramatic. Yeah. Be dramatic. I put on my biggest hat and my fanciest skirt, and I went dog walking down the road, just that's hilarious, rocking it. And I <laughs> felt so purpose. dramatic and so amazing. And and since then, I do seek to be dramatic. Not the word's mm-hmm. not quite dramatic. Sure, it's yeah. expressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Animated. That's Animated. it. Animated. He, your expression made him uncomfortable and now he's saying you're being dramatic and actually actually he does love the the passion and and it was what it was just i was being silly about something yeah 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 and you know in a snap moment that was his retort right i'm just i'm just he got it totally as well which is which is amazing yeah no i totally get that i get that you surround yourself with those types of people i'm just i'm just saying that that actually is a thing that you hear out there a lot like oh don't be so dramatic right you hear it all the time why not just calm down why not yeah calm down Totally guilty. Who yeah. wants to calm down? Ah, uh, yes. I feel like um, it, it would be actually. I, I want to. I, I do want to make sure that we g- get just a, just a little bit more of what you're actually now doing, right? right? Mm-hmm. But also, I think I feel like it would be a bit. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? A bit of a robbery or something if we didn't maybe hear. Like, is there something? Do you have a piece maybe that connects at all with the conversation we're having? Or um, the one thing that I'll say about something you had said about being yourself. It's funny how people will get to being themselves once they get themselves to art. Mm. Even people, especially those who don't believe they're artists in any way, shape or form. It's, it's amazing how, which is a bullshit story. People by the way. <laughs> get a great sense of just how to be once they learn how to art. I don't mm-hmm. care which which one it is. Um, not everyone can replicate, you know, and not everyone can take imagination and put it out there. Not everyone can use words and everyone can express their movement, but express. And someone had said something about connection. And when I'm teaching students about what it is that I do and I tell them about reading well, writing well, speaking well, listening better, I said all of this really comes down to communication, which is connecting with people. There's 7.2 billion other people on this earth. The first and foremost way we connect with them will be through speaking with them. You know, providing that no one has is incapacitated. You don't speak with your eyes. You don't sniff out your problems, right? (laughs) You're going to communicate. So it's all about that connection again. We're colony creatures, bees, ants, termites. That's who we are. If we're not feeling connected, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a terrible thing. Right. You feel, as you said, untethered. Mm -hmm. I have felt that untethered feeling, that adrift feeling. You can make it a whole lot more tangible and say, forget space. None of us are going to be Hadfield in this room, but some of us might be on a large body of water. Being untethered out there, there's that feeling. Mm -hmm. Without purpose, people perish. You've got to connect with yourself first before you connect with everyone else. And usually people find themselves through the arts. Mm-hmm. So that was, those are two things I wanted to bring up. That's a big one. Um, and I'll just uh, lick off a poem that I know has some elements of those things. Awesome. Yeah. And it might be a repeat, but it's just kind of apt. So I'll go with perceptions because I feel that one for this. <clears throat> Actually, I think I'll go with uh, maybe the rhythm method. Well, I haven't heard about one. No, we, yeah, we haven't. Perfect. I think I'll go with the rhythm method. Cats gotta know their limits, though nothing is absolute, I refute. To be the dumbass galoot, get in the boots, stay rooted. With streams and dreams of consciousness, like string confetti, raw spaghetti. Need H2O to create that undeniable, pliable flow, impeccable, like a ball pax. Check for the syntax, Aaron, and your spelling, and check what he be telling. The youth mind that be swelling up, up and away. In that balloon mind, state of denial, putting the common man and common sense on trial. Ask Kafka. He 
come through hardcore to expose bureaucratic loopholes, democratic poop holes, I suppose, that if a god chose and you were chosen, your will would be frozen like mice on ice, not nice. You want some damn good advice times thrice, you catch a sip on the lip, or better yet, come and sit and catch a swallow when I spit my rap shit, I'ma flip this mode, like flip mode squad, as the lyrical shots rock through your bod, son, the rap vlog, son, I'm a god, son, I'm a son, Ra, god, son, Ra, boy, I can't test me with your bra, 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 I bring the microphone hoopla, the way I sit on it and sit on it, before I let my lips slip on it, I'm stabbing thoughts into the ozone, grabbing the gabbing afro, talking live, slapping verbal fives, rap hives, burst on the surface of those who try to work us, black circus ain't our purpose, we ain't worthless, but what list you be if you can't be, just like me, stone free like Jimi Hendrix, tsunami brown waves, digging sound graves, separate all together wherever the tether we weather your audio appendix, call the doctor shocked ya, in your will rocked ya, high upon church steeples, the time a man clocked ya, hard like Sonny Liston, you better listen, your suspicion of madness can put us an ocean apart, restart, cause it's about, and all about time, tick, ticking, talking, got our lives, rocking, reeling, people moving through the life that they got no feeling, that's the kind of shit that got me dancing on the ceiling, I ain't healing factor for a long, long while, third degree, third time burns from the sundial, because time smoked me like Buddha unblessed, mother nature, she laughs at father time undressed, because once again, time came too early, waiting for no one as he is a blind watchmaker, dropping instruments in increments like Ray Charles and Random, rain out of tandem, like a two cedar bike you forgot how to ride now i'm just in the journal of a mad mad bride i feel i must hide between pages and lines lies and love minds silent land minds up and wrecking behinds like no be no other kinds just ask heinz for red was the only shade i could see color blinds the only sound i heard was word cacophony hard times and then let the dickens are always dickens and race around like a flock of headless chickens crazy clucking if you ain't getting nickel and dimed you nip and tuck in if you want to doubt the facts you spend a while in denial where the fed spend your money with greed and guile in an age-old style they're buying bigger toys for smaller boys women buy silicone saturated poise i just can't think there's too much noise precarious dreams nefarious scenes not the first nor the worst mind to burst at the seams but i will keep slinging them mental hot rocks burning hot like sunspots you best call the rap traffic cops i shadow box what my vox i leave degrees of poem c super salty like locks because i'm in the throes and the bliss of a metamorphosis i'm growing the knowledge that i bring on the upswing i'm showing for years i've been bringing it still it's about to be brought special delivery you're gonna catch a package of rap apocalypse brace for armageddon i'm spilling out and spilling over like a mouth too full of teeth i'll be brief take that celestial soulful bath forge your own path Speak up for sometimes we know that there is violence in silence. If you've got artistic gout, then you swell your best out. And you don't be foreign trash, you be a culture clash. You need not get down with any ism or schism. Sometimes we really don't need a method, just rhythm. <sighs> wow, dude. <laughs> what, what's there for you, Karen? I just love the energy that just is flowing right out across this room. Thank you. It's just like... It just changes my vibration to just listen to them. Thank you. Think. Um, I'm st my my poetry is a little different, <laughs> so it's a lot of ideas. Yeah. That's why I felt it was appropriate because we talked about the loneliness. We talked you about past. Listen. We talked about yeah. like actual words that were used. They were all in the poem. That's why the last night I said no. I think this poem's more because I actually heard certain words in our conversation that wove those themes through. And I mean, right at the beginning, as you said, people make it absolute. The first thing I said is, cats got to know their limits because nothing is absolute. Mm, yes. That's yeah. the first thing I said. Yes. And I learned that from my Taekwondo master, Master yeah. Lepin. One stupid ass guy asked him one time, what's a better martial art? Is Taekwondo against Kung Fu again? And I was just like, oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I was like, we're about to get our black belts and you're asking this question now. Why? And right. so... Master Le Pen always did one of these before he spoke. Very tall Cree gentleman. And he looked and he said, nothing is absolute. Off he, off and, he and that's it. And I was like, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask that about anything <laughs> ever again. Did you hear that? Yeah. 
don't ask that question about anything ever again. That's so funny. I always, I, I definitely didn't say it with that type of power, but that's what I say. My kids always want to know what's my favorite X. Like, what's my favorite? And I just say, you know, like, I don't have a favorite. I just don't like feel like I don't want to be put like, what's your favorite song? Like, <laughs> Yeah. I've heard it depends like 10, how I'm thousand. feeling. Yeah, it depends on how I'm feeling, right? For that time. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's I, I want I I want to put this on the table, make it public on the podcast. What I'd like to do is we do a whole podcast where we essentially just hang out with Wakefield, have a conversation, have him do some poetry, and then we dissect it because I, I really want to hear yeah, that. I'm aligned there, and we'd want to have it like a copy of it so that we can. Like reference it and, and start pulling pull, out some lines because sometimes he'll do that. He'll break down where that actually Get came surgery from in there. And you're just like, <laughs> it's so fascinating when you hear where it came from and how he put that together and tied. It's just like, wow, there's so much more story to one line. You just have no idea. Right. Yeah. So we are coming up near the end. Um, and to Vern's point before, uh, I want to. I want to end it off with you sharing a little bit about what it is that you're doing right now and then how at the end we'll, we'll let know, people know how they can find you. Sure. That'd be great. So what I want to do now with, my, I feel so purposeful with my art, not just in creating it and sharing it, which I know excites some people that look at it and that mm. makes me happy. But <laughs> what I really like is encouraging other people to find their own direction artistically uh, at my workshops uh, in, in addition to talking about how people can find well-being it's also to teach um, the value of their uniqueness mm -hmm. and that they don't paint like anybody else and that their mark making is all individual and all valuable and also if they think of a question the answer is always yes mm -hmm. and it might just launch them in a whole new direction you can ask an instructor all these things and they can say yes do this no don't do that but honestly, don't listen to an instructor. <laughs> Figure it out yourself. If you came up with the idea, try it. My point in going forward in, an, in another way is that I want to travel throughout Alberta and I've started my journey. It's been slowed a little bit because I applied for a grant and didn't get it. But I don't really think that even has any relevance in a way to my journey. Uh, it can just be, another path. It's just, it's just another path. It's just the pendulum came back a little bit. And I reset the direction of it. Um, so I will travel first throughout Alberta and then across Canada with the whole point, not as a monetary adventure at all, but to meet people, to meet other artists and to talk to them about their journey in art, to make art with them, to be inspired by each other artistically, personally, to find out more about how art has supported them. Really, art, how we do art is how we live our life. And to look at what we're doing, each of us. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. So, so how can people find you? Where are you? I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I have a website, but it's, as I haven't had a computer, I haven't been able to keep it up to date. So Facebook is really the best way to find me. Cool. Put my name in uh, Google we'll, search we'll and I'm put it in the show notes as well. Find. Yeah, yeah. We'll make yeah. sure people can find you. Oh, that's awesome. Karen, it was a pleasure to have you here. I knew it was going to be something magical. Uh, and I was right. And I guess that light went out. Yeah. It's perfect. All right. So that was episode 55 of the Just Life podcast. Do you got anything to say? I kind of blanked out there. <laughs> well, that was episode 55. I actually kind of felt you going like, yeah. Then you were like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, By the it's, pendulum. It is perfect. Yes, so, yeah. right? Gritty, real, and uncensored. Mm -hmm. Episode 55. Thanks yeah, for listening. Just, yeah, just stay tuned for next week. <laughs> There'll be another one. Peace out.